Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Jody, this is Inspire Woodcraft, and today I'm doing video part three on my Shisugi Bon Inspired Burn and Brush finishing technique. What we do is we take a piece of wood, we burn it, we brush it, and we color treat it, and then it ends up looking something, again, like this. And here's a sample here. Now this is just a few little samples that I did up real quick yesterday. So today I want to talk about the brushes. Now if you've seen the last two videos and you've been patiently awaiting this video, I sincerely apologize for the time delay. I've been really busy around here. It hasn't left a lot of time to shoot and edit video, but here we are today. If you haven't seen the last two videos, I highly suggest taking a look at them. I'll link them down below. The first two videos in the series go over what to look for um, when you're selecting wood to do this technique on and it kind of goes over a few of the variables and then I go over the differences in my burning techniques so you can get a few different styles and designs out of it depending on what it is you're trying to do. Now just so we're all on the same page, this is not a sponsored video. These are the brands and the things that I use um, every day when I do this technique. I will leave affiliate links down below so that you guys can go check some of these things out for yourself if you choose to. Alright, so in the beginning, this is what I used. Nylon scrub brush, that's it. You might use it to clean your bathroom or your sink or something like that. Uh, it's just a utility brush. This works really good for just getting off loose char. It also works really good, oddly enough, for cleaning. These are just wire brushes. This is a stainless steel wire brush. This is a brass wire brush. This one's a little bit stiffer. It's gonna give you more tooling marks, which are gonna be like the scratch marks that are in there. This one's gonna do that, but it's gonna be a lot softer. Sometimes when I use the nylon brush, I might go over it with this just to put those tooling marks in there. This is a Nylox cut brush. It's NY, like I say, I'll leave links for everything down below. This is similar to a wire cut brush, which would be this, Basically this exact same thing, but instead of these orange nylon strands coming out, it would be wire strands. There's some pros and cons to this. The pros was that this worked a heck of a lot faster than the wire hand brushes that I was using. The downfall is that this is meant to go in a drill, and when it does, it spins the opposite direction of the grain. So it's, you have to kind of get it on there and spin it this way. I'll show you guys here in just a minute what I mean. It works really good. I just don't like the fact that it goes against the grain. I like what I now use, which is these. This is also made by Nylox, and they're also nylon brushes. This is more of a flap wheel. They also make a disc. Now, both the disc and the flap wheel spin with the direction of the grain, and a couple of things happen. Not only is it more uniform, but because it goes with the grain, you're not left with as many circular scratch marks. Now, I know a lot of people like to use the wire cut brushes. Um, I tried that in the beginning, and I didn't really care for it as much. This is my new go-to. I think these are like nine or ten bucks on Amazon. If I had to recommend one inexpensive brush to use, I think I would recommend this one. Now, you might have noticed already that they come in different colors, so that's because they're different grits, just like if you were to buy sandpaper. I believe this one's an 80 grit. This one is maybe a 120 grit, and I think this is a 240 grit. They're a little more and less coarse, depending on the color that you get. But that's uniform throughout, so if I have an orange cut brush, it's gonna be the same as this brush for that one. All right, enough about those. Last but not least, is gonna be this guy. This is the Porter Cable Restorer. That's a wire brush that's on there. This is a fairly heavy tool. It creates a lot of noise and a lot of dust, but if you have large volumes, um, this is the way to go. It also has a dust port on the back. It works really, really well when you hook it up to a shop vac or something. Couple things to note about this. This does have a wire wheel, and it also has, it also has a nylon wheel. Now these two wheels are separate attachments. When you buy the machine, it comes with uh, some sanding drums and stuff like that. You have to buy these two wheels separate and this is also going to be the more expensive of all these options. Wire wheels, and this goes for the cut brushes as well, they start to break down. The wires start to break off and they start to fling all over the place. Now it's not a huge catastrophe, but you're going to find the little wire strands uh, once in a while here and there, so probably a good idea to maybe wear pants. It's probably a good idea to always wear 
pants. You want something to protect your skin, maybe. You don't want these little guys ending up everywhere. And then, of course, keep in mind that they can embed in your clothes and whatnot. You can track that into your home. This one, obviously, really dirty, well used. I've used this quite a bit, and I do recommend it. It's not the only one on the market. I know Makita makes one as well, which people absolutely rave about. I bought the Porter Cable Restore because of price. Uh, I was limited on my budget. The Makita is much more expensive. In fact, I think, I think the heads for it alone cost as much is the porter cable so um, just keep that in mind I'll try and remember to to put a link down below so you guys can at least check that out if your budget allows and this is something you really want to do that might be a really good option now one other technique um, that's pretty popular mostly on siding and outdoor stuff is to use a nylon push broom essentially that's going to be the exact same thing is raking this across it. That's gonna be for more outdoor projects. It's gonna be larger surface area. It'd be really hard to hold this down and run a push broom across it, but if you have fence boards, especially if this is something that you've burnt and it's in place, running a broom up and down is gonna be pretty beneficial. You're not gonna wanna sit there with a, a scrub brush and try scrubbing it all down. Now why in the world do I have so many brushes to begin with? Well, because each brush does something different. I have a used paint brush that I use quite a bit. People have noticed in my past videos that I've used this brush to to brush things off and they think I'm applying some sort of finish to I actually use this to clean any loose soot and debris off so that I can see what's going on so I'm gonna go through here I'm gonna show you a little bit about what each one does and the differences you're gonna come across and then you guys should be able to take that knowledge from there and see what it is you want to do all right so we're just gonna go ahead and start with our nylon scrub brush you probably see the pile of soot that's coming in behind it this is essentially the quickest easiest way to do what we're doing um, you can go back and forth like this i like to just rake it in one direction if you can see we have a pretty nice sheen to it there's very very low tooling marks brush off any loose soot just in case this is very subtle there's no real dramatic if I clean this up, you've got the black lines and then you've got kind of a brown. Now we started out with a white colored piece of wood so this might not take color very well. In fact, I have this piece here. This is all dyed with yellow and we're gonna go into coloring in a different video but the reason I bring that up is because this edge right here was just used with that same nylon brush and then I put yellow over it. You can't really tell that it's yellow and that's why because you're starting off with such a dark canvas. So if we move into our handheld wired brushes, we'll split this up here so maybe we can see it. Now remember, this is a stainless steel, this is the brass, this one's thicker, heavier wire, this one's really soft wire. Same thing, I just like to pull back on it. Now you can see how much soot really gets lifted up by this. If you're gonna be doing a lot of this, might be good to wear a dust mask or something to try and keep that soot out of your lungs, out of your face. This takes a little bit of muscle um, to get this actually, get it down far enough. And again, you could always do it in more of a scrubbing motion. You can see where it's starting to pull back that original color a little bit. Now if we switch this half to the soft wire brush, and pull this back. Same thing. I'll brush this off. But on this side, you're gonna see more of those tooling marks. You're gonna see a lot more of the scratches. This side, you're not gonna have nearly the amount of scratches, and it's gonna be, again, a little bit darker. You can kinda see there's a transition going on. Of course, I really scrubbed on this part. Now, this is that same piece with the yellow dye. This is with the stainless steel wire brush, this is with the brass wire brush. You can see, again, the difference. We went from nylon to stainless, and you can see that transition. This is gonna be able to do a better job at digging back that original color, and then, well, not so much. So if we jump right in to our Nylox brushes, this is where things happen a little quicker, a little funner, because it's instant gratification. I'm gonna start with our 240. And I think what we'll find out is it's gonna be very similar to that nylon brush. This is gonna fling stuff quite a bit, so again, it's a good idea to probably wear safety glasses and a dust mask because this gets dirty real fast. Now I'm gonna do half with the 240, and I'm gonna do half with what I believe, if I remember right, is the 120.
huge difference. Yes, the coarser brush did a better job. Problem is that you have to push a little bit harder to get a real deep groove. It's left a lot of weird tooling marks. The reason that I don't care for this as much is because you really have to push a little harder to get the same amount of work done as you would with this one. I believe this is an 80 grit. Let's give this 80 grit a try and see how well it does. Now as you can see that makes a huge difference. Obviously I stayed on there a lot longer than I did with the other ones but that's because that brush will actually dig down deep enough to pull all the original wood color back. One thing I wanted to point out is there's a couple of different things going on here. So one, you do still have the tooling marks um, just like you would have with the wire brush or the 120 grit. So you see how this is black and then this is kind of a, a brown, and then this is a really light color. Many times I've been asked, how are you getting three different colors? You have the dark, um, hard grain that's been scorched, and then you've dug back out, and you're actually revealing the unscorched part of that exact same piece of grain, and then this is just the soft meat that's in between. Um, I'm gonna show you guys the cut brush really quick, just because I have it here. You can get an idea for what the difference is. Oh, one more thing really quick. If you happen to own a drill press, this actually works really good for in the drill press. I could put this in the drill press, turn the drill press on, and this just spins. And when that's spinning, I can actually bring the wood up to it and move the wood instead of moving the tool. And that's actually really handy and has gotten me by quite a bit. So let's hit this with the cut brush and see what the difference is. Good enough for right this second. I just want to show you guys. Now you may have noticed that I was kind of holding that thing uh, at an angle. You can tell by looking at the brush that it's only dirty on the edges, right? I didn't go to the center. If you hold it flat down, not only is it going to go all over a place and wander, it's going to create some really crazy crosshatch patterns. So if you hold it at a bit of an angle, it's going to be able to get inside those grooves a little bit better. But even then, you end up with these sort of circular marks. Again, just keep that in mind. But again, I'm always gonna go back to these flat brushes. Uh, just, I like the way that they go with the grain and actually pull stuff out from in between uh, a lot better. All right, so now let's get the big noisy beast out here. This one's gonna be loud and it's gonna create a lot of mess. Now, one thing to remember with this is this has a trigger here and it has a lock here. So you pull the trigger, push the button, let go of the trigger, and now the trigger is locked. This isn't plugged in yet. Had this been plugged in with the trigger locked down, this wheel would spin and this thing would go shooting across the room and probably create a lot of mayhem along the way. So before you plug these in, it's a good idea to just pull that trigger and make sure that that lock isn't pushed or hold it up and plug it in. Um, either way, you just don't want this thing running off on you. Real quick, you can see how it works. I pull the button and it spins. Pretty simple. So this is our end result. Now, this gives us the best of both worlds in a way because not only are we removing a lot of the material at once, we're actually getting some of those tooling marks in there too. I used the Restore on this piece um, and it brushed actually really well. Now, I also mentioned that there's a nylon brush uh, for this, which I do have sitting here, um, but I'm not gonna use it. What I'll use this for is sometimes I'll go back over the wire brush and that'll help smooth out some of these more jagged areas. Now, this is perfectly fine. I can run my hand over it and it's not gonna cut me or hurt me or, or splinter off. It's just nice to be able to get those uh, burrs kind of sanded back down. And then that way when you're brushing, your brush doesn't snag on that stuff and uh, cause little hiccups along the way. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for today. I'm gonna take these pieces, I'm gonna keep working on them. We're gonna move right into coloring. That's gonna be on another uh, video, of course. 
but hopefully this gave you guys enough tools to work with to figure out how to brush and get the different effects that you're looking for. As always, be safe. Eye protection, hearing protection, especially when you're using this noisy thing, uh, and something to keep all this soot and crap out of your lungs because it will work its way into some pretty interesting spaces. Uh, if this helped at all, give me a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated. It really does help and make a difference. Check out those other two videos. Hit the subscribe button and the bell if you would like. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video when we talk about coloring. Thanks again.